pray that you would be with us in this afternoon service. Pray that your message would go forth and take root into the souls of your elect people, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, this morning we talked about this uh, grace that is all from Christ and not from man, not of works lest any man should boast. And we find that there is not only a spiritual place, but there's actually a physical place, a real, tangible, physical heaven that's waiting for all of God's elect. Christ is prepared for us. And this hymn that we sang, My rest is in heaven, my rest is not here, then why should I murmur when trials are near? Well, it's good to know that we have a place that has been prepared for us in heaven. And Christ has been very specific about that in John the 14th chapter. He says, In my Father's house are many mansions. And there's been a lot of people that have denied the, the literal place of heaven. There's been a lot of songs written that try to dispel heaven. Heaven is in your mind and all kind of things. You know, if I die, just let me go to somewhere other than heaven. But he says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, if it were not so, there's a lot of people saying it's not so. If it were not so, I would have told you, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. A lot of people have denied the second coming of Jesus Christ. They say, well, that's a spiritual thing. It's not an actual return of Christ. But he said, in the same manner that I leave, will I return again. How did he leave? He rose in the clouds. And he's not coming back to Independence, Missouri either, um, Latter-day Saints folks. And if I go to a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. What did he tell the thief on the cross? He told the thief on the cross, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. And, and uh, that's an amazing thing. Now, there, there are many passages that point to heaven and the paradise of heaven. And we've talked about this before, about the beauties of heaven. Why do we talk about heaven? Well, because it gives us courage and strength to keep on as pilgrims in this earth which is full of pain and sorrow and suffering and, and heartache. Now, I cannot imagine what heaven is going to be like. I cannot even, um, even imagine it. We're going to look a little bit about what heaven has in the 21st chapter of Revelation. And it kind of describes heaven. Now, a lot of people that uh, are into symbolism will say, oh, that's just symbolic. And they try to explain it away. But if heaven is a real place, and in the 10th verse it says, and he carried me away in the spirit, I'm reading in the 21st chapter of Revelation, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Now, a lot of people have denied that, that there's actually going to descend out of heaven the new Jerusalem, but that's what he says. And it says, having the glory of God and their light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall, great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gate twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. A lot of people want to diminish the role of angels in the last day, to return of Christ. Um, we saw another passage where he would, his angels would, would gather his elect from the four corners of the earth and so on and a lot of people try to explain that away we're not going to get into that today well, on the east three gates of the north three gates on the south three gates and on the west three gates and on the wall of the city had twelve foundations and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb that's talking about Christ's apostles and you know he had twelve and yes Judas was replaced uh, they said, well, there wasn't 11 after Judas. Yes, there was 12 after Judas. They said, well, there was 11 after Judas. No, Judas was replaced. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And then the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. Think about that. That is huge. And he measured the city with a reed 12,000 furlongs. 
The length and the breadth and the height of it are all are equal. And he measured the wall thereof in a hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of a man, that is, of, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. Now, we talk about the value of gold, how it's currently worth about, you know, I don't know, four or five hundred dollars an ounce. Well, here's a city that was pure gold. Pure gold is like unto glass. That is, that is pure. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stuff. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth the topaz, the tenth the Christophorus, Christus, the eleventh a jasper, the twelfth amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Can you believe that? Every gate was pearl. Every several gate was one one of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein. I'm glad that there aren't going to be any temples in heaven. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of the Lord did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved, and the nations of them which are saved, shall walk in the light of it, and the king of the earth, kings of the earth, do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Well, John really did a beautiful, beautiful uh, description of heaven, the New Jerusalem. And we cannot imagine living in a city of pure gold, all of those jewels that he mentioned, amethyst and beryl and chrysolite and sardonyx and uh, topaz and jasmine, and amethyst and gates of pearl. But that's what it says. Now a lot of people say, well, do you really believe that? Yes, I really believe that. Will you actually take that literal? Yes, I do. I do believe that. And I also believe in the uh, next chapter it says, he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, and in the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These things are faith these things are faithful and true. This isn't some kind of symbolism, this isn't a metaphor, this isn't some kind of parody, this isn't some kind of uh, uh, what they would call uh, uh, you know, a metaphor or anything like this. This is true. These things are true. Now, uh, heaven is a real place. And for us who are walking as pilgrims on this earth, we should not be discouraged. Our, our peace and our comfort and our joy rest in eternal heaven. Not here on this earth. We're uh, there's it, this earth is going to be folded up like a, a rug. It's going to be destroyed by fire. It's going to no longer be. But there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. And, you know, if we look back in that 14th chapter of John for a minute, he says, uh, Go back there again, 14th chapter of John. Let not your heart be troubled. There's a lot of people with troubled hearts, and they're worried about the future. They're worried about what's going to happen to this earth and everything else. And he immediately points them to where? To heaven. And uh, if you look in Acts, the first chapter of Acts, <coughs> you'll see that he says in the 11th, about the 11th verse there, 
Acts 1.11, uh, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. They were standing out there at the Mount of Olives, and they all of a sudden looked up, and he started sitting up into heaven. And he's going to come back just like he left. That's what the scripture says is going to happen. And if we look in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, he says in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord or comfort one another with these words well we can be comforted when we see all these things going coming to pass and going on around us we have to take comfort in realizing our home is not here on this earth our home is in heaven he's prepared a place for us in heaven now let's look at 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter and let's look down around the 51st verse there he says um, behold I show you a mystery we shall not sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed we're going to get a glorified body for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this incorruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And so it's showing us that our future residence does not reside here on this earth. Our future residence is in the New Jerusalem. And a lot of people don't want to accept that. They want to think, well, there's, you know, there's a stopping off point. And then, you know, a lot of people, the Catholics, say you have to go to purgatory first. This didn't tell us if he had to go to purgatory. He said, this day will you be with me in paradise. Uh, now, let's look in Matthew, the 24th chapter. Matthew, the 24th chapter. And let's look around about the 31st verse there, I believe. Matthew 24, 31. He says, uh, let's, let's start with uh, verse 30. And then shall appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels. You know, a lot of these angels, you know, don't have anything to do with the second coming of yes they do this is Christ talking here and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of earth, heaven to the other okay that's what it says now he also talks about the fact that uh, we have a great great future ahead of us a lot of people think well I've got to think about my retirement I got to think about my health insurance. I got to think about my CDs and my 401k. Well, that really, <laughs> I guess, okay. But what did Christ say about these things? Let's go back now to the sixth chapter of Matthew and around about the twenty-fourth verse. He says, "No man can serve two masters." For he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God as mammon, mammon meaning money. Therefore I say, you take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And he goes on and says, verse 31, Therefore take no thought, and that means, in other words, don't be anxious about all this stuff going on, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? 
For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that we have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for you tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for itself, things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Well, uh, I, I can tell you this, that um, we as pilgrims and strangers on this earth, we, t- we sang that song, I saw a blood wash pilgrim. I saw a blood worship pilgrim, a sinner saved by grace. And we saw that he had gone through a lot of trials as he walked this earth with all of its sorrows and its pain and everything else. But if we remember the last verse, Palms of Victory. He had landed up where he uh, was journeying toward all that time on his pilgrimage and on his walk. He landed up in heaven. And um, so he says, If I go away, I will prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and come again and receive you unto myself. Well, do you believe that? Do I believe that? That's the question today. Um, Do we believe that there is a literal heaven? Do we believe that we are going to be... um, eternally with the, with Jesus Christ someday. Do we believe that our names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the foundation of the world? Well, a lot of people laugh when you start talking about these spiritual things. And they t- tend to make light of these things. And, you know, let's go back to, again, just look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.17. We talked about this fall ago. 1 Thessalonians 4. 17 <clears throat> says when we then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be at the Lord a lot of people laugh they say these fundamentalist Christians think they're going to go up in the cloud the rock singer that's talking about you know I don't think that my destiny is going to be settled in the cloud well you know some they from your destiny probably won't be settled in the clouds, Mr. Rock Singer. But it says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we're supposed to be comforting one another with these words. That's what it says. That's what we're told to do, is to comfort one another with these words. Um, and if you look over in the second Thessalonians, um, he says... Um, in the 16th verse of the second chapter, uh, now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us, hath given us an everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We should be comforted. Look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. And so that's why we look toward heaven. That's why we say, you know what? I know that. Uh, God has done all the work and I know that he's prepared a place for us and I know that we're going to have uh, tribulation we're going to have to go through and I know that uh, the end result is going to be that we are going to be with Christ we are not children of the darkness go over to 1 Corinthians the 5th chapter and he says in the fifth verse, First Corinthians five, verse five, ye are ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep or do as others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet to hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. There's another consolation. We are going to, whether we wake or whether we sleep, we will live together with Jesus Christ. 
and he says we should comfort ourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do so today or this afternoon we should remember that Jesus Christ is coming back he's prepared a place for us he's coming again to receive us unto himself and that where we are there I mean that where he is there we may be also and um, he says in the second uh, Thessalonians the second chapter uh, verse 15 therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught whether by word or our epistle now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope